Hello, this is David. And this talk will be a relatively inexpert review that I'll call the notion of epithelial to mesenchymal transition in embryology, which is development, and neoplasia, which is cancer. So to start off, I have to begin by defining what's epithelium and what's mesenchyme. Because if we're going to talk about epithelial to mesenchymal transition, or EMT, then we have to define what epithelium and what mesenchyme is, and what the transition, therefore, would mean. Well, what this really represents, epithelium, epithelium and mesenchyme, are two different type of subsets of cells in our body. Epithelium is the type of cells that line things. So lining the skin surface, that's a form of epithelium, that's the epidermis. Lining the trachea, lining the digestive tract. Cells that line structures are called epithelium. Whereas, cells that form the connective tissue of our body are referred to as the mesenchyme. So things like cartilage, bone, fibrous connective tissue, that's mesenchyme. Now, the cells that make up epithelium are fundamentally different than the cells that make up connective tissue. The cells that make up epithelium tend to be tightly held together, and they have this plump appearance, this plump cuboidal or circular appearance, and they're tightly held together, and here it's shown, they're held together by these anchors. And the anchors that hold the cell together are called junctions. And they have names like desmosomes or adherence junctions. And they hold the cell together. And the other thing that epithelium often have is what's called polarization. In other words, this side of the cell, which we could call the basal half, is different than this side of the cell, which we could call the apical half. So this polarity, the cells are not symmetrical, one half is different than the other, and the cells tend to rest on something called the basement membrane. But the cells are tightly grabbing to one another. And for the sake of simplification, in epithelia, the cells that grab each other are often go by the name cadherins. Cadherins. Ca for calcium because they're calcium dependent, and herins because they adhere. So there's these cadherins that grip cell to cell. Imagine this cell has a cadherin and this cell has a cadherin, and they're holding like two hands holding together, except it's not two hands, it's many, 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 many hands. And that's what creates the stickiness of cells in an epithelium. Whereas in mesenchyme, the cells don't have this kind of polarization. The cells also are not adherent to one another, but rather they tend to be adherent to the matrix in which they sit, the connective material, which could either be proteins, which I've shown in red, or, or um, ground substance, mucopolysaccharides, that, that could also reside in this space. And the cells have anchors too. But instead of the anchors, like here, grabbing cell to cell, like epithelium does with its cadherins, in mesenchyme, the anchors grab to the connective type of material that we call stroma. And these anchors tend not to be cadherins, but a member of another family called integrins. So just to review quickly, epithelium are polarized cells with strong cell-to-cell -cell contact. Whereas mesenchymal cells have weak cell to cell, weak if any cell to cell contact, but they have strong cell matrix contacts. Mesenchymal cells tend to be more mobile; they could move more. Whereas epithelial cells, they're all adherent to each other in a line. So now let's briefly turn our attention to the process of embryogenesis, or development of the early embryo, and discuss how this story of cell adhesions plays an important role. Well, we all eventually come, we all eventually are derived from a single cell, which is the initial fert fertilized gamete, their initial two gametes form the initial zygote, and they tend to form early on a cluster of cells that's called the morula. The 
early, early on in life of the more more yula, early on in life of the developing fetus. And if you look early, early at the early morula, let's say one day of development, two days of development, three days of development, these cells are very non-adhesive. They're not sticky, and all these cells are basically what we call stem cells, and they don't have any differentiation. One is similar to the other. But then a magical thing starts to happen, and the cell starts to differentiate, and you start to get different parts. And one part is called the outer cell mass, and the other part, and that actually forms the placenta, and the part that's external to the fetus, and then you have another part that's called the inner cell mass. And the inner cell mass is what ultimately formed the fetus. Now, very early on, very, very early on in development, this inner cell mass once again differentiates, and you start to see two layers present. But what I want you to note is to go from this stage, to start to go to this stage, and then to this stage, the cells start to develop characteristics and relationship to each other. And so you go from this n relatively unsticky clump of cells here, then you start to develop here and here group of cells that start to stick together. And as you may have guessed, that sticking together is mediated by molecules such as the cadherins that we discussed earlier. And in the early developing inner cell mass, the first thing you see is two cell layers. This is called the bilaminar disc, or two cell disc. And the first one layer is what's going to become the ectoderm, which forms the skin, the, what faces the outside of the body. And the other is the endoderm, sort of what forms the lining, like the intestinal cavity, the lining of internal structures. And then there's another process very early, early in the early developing embryo where a third layer develops, like a sandwich between the, uh, between the ectoderm over here and the endoderm over here, you develop another layer called the mesoderm. And the mesoderm is from where all the connective tissue comes. And it sort of is a migration. Cells c come out of the ectoderm and form the mesoderm. But these cells are very different because these are like your connective tissue cells. They're not adherent to one another. They're more adherent to their matrix, to the mesenchyme. They're spindle cells. They're not very attached to one another. They have more freedom of motion. And they're more interested in their surrounding scaffoldy substance than in their adhesions to one another. And they also lack the type of polarization that ectoderm and endoderm have. Needless to say, ectoderm and endoderm become epithelia, whereas mesoderm becomes your mesenchyme, your connective tissue, your bone, your cartilage, your soft tissue. Now, you're imagining, so here's your inner cell mass, and you can imagine your inner cell mass is like a plate, but ultimately it has thickness. So you can imagine this whole structure, sort of, it has depths like this, your ectoderm, your mesoderm, and your endoderm, and it forms almost like a tube. And we won't get into the anatomical detail here, but if you imagine, here's your ectoderm on your surface. About a week later in development, something magical happens on the ectoderm. So you could imagine, here's your tube, and on, here's your ectoderm, and let's say on this patch of ectoderm, something magic is going to happen. So let's say we take this tube and we just look at the surface. So here's your ectoderm on the surface, and then a part of the ectoderm, the, the, once again, something magical happens. The, set, the, the adhesion molecules between the cells start to change, and the cells in this patch start to change their character. And they become less adherent to their neighbors here and here, and they sort of develop their own individual properties. And then they start to bud inwards inwards towards the, the organism's body cavity, out from, away from the surface, because the ectoderm faces the outer surface. And they eventually bud off and form a tube, and this tube is called the neural tube. And this is the process of formation of the neural tube, or gastrulation, that, that's so important in the developing embryo. And so you have your formation of your neural tube, you have your formation of, sorry, it's not gastrulation, but it's your formation of your neural tube. And your neural tube then forms, and then, and then something else magical happens. W within an area of your neural tube, there are some cells that once again change their adhesion properties. And of course, once again, this relates to changes in expression of cadherins. 
but this time they bud off entirely. So this little patch of cells here and this patch of cells here from the neural tube, they start to chain their properties, chain their adhesion, lose their adherence to their neighbors and actually bud off, bud off and form a separate colony. And this colony is called the neural crest. And these neural crest cells are now butted off the neural tube. And this is a form of epithelial to mesenchymal transition. These cells in your neural tube are all what we call neuroepithelium. They have epithelial properties. Whereas these cells in your neural crest have mesenchymal properties. And they undergo a biological prop process called EMT, or epithelial to mesenchymal transition. The neural crest cells walk all over the body and form different type of tissue types. They form your peripheral nervous system. They form ganglia. They actually even form part of the cardiac septum. And they also form the melanocytes in the skin. So let's just briefly discuss what the melanocytes in the skin are in very general terms. So in very general, broad terms, the skin is a multi-layered epithelium. It has what's called a basal layer. And you have these cells, they're called squamous epithelial cells, and they develop upwards and then they lose their nuclei. And this is just a, a cell product called keratin, but the nuclei are gone. And this is what we call a keratinizing squamous epithelium, which is what the skin is. But these neural crest cells walked early in development, they had this mesenchymal phenotype, and they walked, 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 and they insinuated themselves into this squamous epithelium of the skin, these are the melanocytes, and they form proper a certain type of adhesion molecules, like cadherins, with their neighboring cells, and they basically become epithelial-like, and they establish their place within the epithelium, right here at the lower part of the ep epithelium, at what we call the dermoepidermal junction, this junction, because it's the boundary between the epidermis and the dermis, which is underneath here. So at the junction, you have these cells, these melanocytes, let's say one melanocyte per every 10 or 5 keratinocytes, and they make melanin, which we won't discuss here, but they're either quite epithelial. But you know, there is a, a tumor called a melanoma. And one of the things that seems to happen in a melanoma is you have your melanocytes, but then they start to divide, and they start to get bad. They start to do bad things. And one of the things they start to do is they start to form colonies in the dermis, where they shouldn't be. And then the nuclei start to develop mutations and, and get bad. And one of the things that they start to do, the cells lose... See, here they still have their epithelial qualities. Even though they're no longer in the squamous epithelium, they're now underneath, they form clusters, which is a good thing because it means that they're adherent to one another. They still have their adhesion. They still have their E properties, their epithelial properties. But as they start to get worse and develop more cancer-like, more melanoma-like properties, they start to say goodbye to each other. And now their main contacts and affinities are with the connective tissue. They no longer have the same affinity to one another. The nuclei get bigger and worse, they lose their affinity to one another, and then they could migrate, and they could move, and they become mobile, and they could get places where they shouldn't be, like blood vessels, and that could then they could get to other parts of the body and metastasize. And the other thing that they do even is they start to move upwards into the epidermis, and we call that pagetoid spread, and to the pathologist, that's a feature that helps you know that something could be a melanoma. But all this I want to show you that part of the biology of melanoma is the loss of epithelial features and the acquisition of mesenchymal features, in other words, a form of epithelial to mesenchymal transition. In other words, the melanoma cells, when the, the, way, um, the way melanocytes become melanoma is by using um, a program that's present in development that sometimes serves a good purpose this process of enabling cells to butt off epithelia and walk around this epithelial to mesenchymal transition, sometimes it occurs in the normal context or in the developing context in embryology, and it's good. But tumor cells could hijack that embryological process and use it for bad purposes. They could use the same program at the wrong time and in the wrong way to lose their adherence and dependence on one another and be able to walk around. Now, the last thing is I just want to discuss this program very, 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 very briefly.
So imagine you have your melanocyte here, and here this nucleus, and it's expressing these sticky molecules that we call cadherins, and it has this E epithelial phenotype. So let's say it starts to develop mutations in its DNA, and it wants to be bad, and it wants to develop the capacity to walk around. Well, one of the genes that it first starts to express is a gene called twist. And this gene twist is a regulator. And if it's a regulator, it's a transcriptional regulator, so it acts on the DNA, and it tells the DNA to do something interesting. It tells the DNA to stop making cadherins. So in this epithelial to mesenchymal transition, you get upregulation or increased expression of this gene called twist, which then you get decreased expression or knockout of your E cadherin, and that enables these cells to go from this type of biology to this type of biology, which is they're less dependent on each other and more able to walk around. And it's interesting that of all tumors, one of the tumor types that really seems to use EMT, or epithelial to mesenchymal transition, as a way of metastasizing is the melanoma. Because after all, when somebody wants to do something bad, they often choose a weapon, this is sort of almost like Harry Potter, they almost choose a weapon that was part of their upbringing or part of their past. So when this little, um, you know, um, 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 melanocyte, who was previously a good wizard, wants to go to the dark side and join Voldemort, it's going to choose a weapon that was part of its history. And he says, hmm, I want to be bad. I want to become Dr. Evil. I want to leave this environment of my squamous epithelium and start wreaking havoc. What do I know? Oh, when I was a developing fetus, I came from this line of cells that broke off the neural tube and that formed this neural crest and was able to walk around. And that was a process called EMT. Well, maybe I could reawaken the EMT, not for a good developmental purpose, but to, see, but to, but to suit the, the needs of he who sh shall not be named. Not Voldemort, but metastasis. Well, I hope you enjoyed this um, semi-dramatization of EMT. Thank you so much.